Alan, I'm upset you didn't TikTok while you were here. Great to see you on Beef TV. <laughs> no, well, there's a few videos coming up. Don't stress, just got to do a bit of editing. Love it. Very good. Hey, don't go anywhere. You meet some inspiring people over the course of Beef. And one is a woman whose story is the catalyst for a global hit movie. Sam, it's a pleasure to have you here. It's a long way from the northern <laughs> beaches of Sydney. Yeah. Have you had much to do with the ag industry? Uh, not really. Like, I haven't grown up on a farm, put it that way. Um, but I love, I love it. Um, we've been very fortunate, my husband Cam and I, when we do do talks, to go to country towns, and, and they're our favourite by far. It's because of the people, sorry, it's the people. They're amazing, and they're just down to earth, and yeah, just incredible. We think you're down to earth too. Beef Week is really pleased to have you here as their guest. Can you take us back to that moment that changed your life back in Thailand? Yeah, sure. So Cam and I have always loved travelling, and we have three boys, and we wanted to instil our love of travel in them. And so we took them on a family holiday to Thailand. This was in 2013. And we were in Phuket for, geez, I think only four days. And one of the kids spotted like an observation deck. And so we went up there to have our juice. And I lent on a railing and it had dry rot, but I didn't realise. And so I fell six metres and, yeah, broke my back and sustained numerous other injuries. A foreign country, a horrific accident. What element did that create? What element of challenge did that then create? Yeah, it was incredibly hard because we're in a very remote place where my accident happened. And so we went to a local hospital and that was, I actually don't remember it, but it was pretty chaotic. I think they were trying to shave my hair because I'd split my head open. And apparently I'm so embarrassed, but I was telling them where to go. I can't believe I did that. And then they x-rayed me and realized it was pretty um, severe, my injuries. And yeah, I went to a big private hospital but obviously, I mean, the language barrier, sure, they speak English in Thailand, but, yeah, it was quite challenging. But I think I was very lucky. It was a pretty amazing hospital. Except they did mess up one time. They did mess up, though. They, and, and I should have picked up on this because I am a nurse, but when I hit my head, I had bleeds and whatnot, so I wasn't really focusing on anything. So they left me on a spinal board for three days, which wasn't the smartest thing to do. So I came home after three weeks with a massive pressure injury on my sacrum. Yeah, so you don't do that. In here, you never leave a spinal patient on a hardboard. You made it back to Australia, though, to further medical care. Yeah. But fast forward to that day that your son brought in an injured bird to the house. Yeah, sure. So Noah, uh, my middle son, found a little baby magpie that had been blown out of her nest. And we thought she would have died if we left her there. That's why we picked her up and took her home. And she changed everything because this was three months after I'd come home from hospital. And I was not in a good headspace. I was so sad and so angry. And then when he bought, we named her Penguin because she, we thought she looked like a penguin. And so, um, yeah, when he bought her home, she just changed everything. She, well, took the focus off me for a start, which I love because I hate being centre of attention. And just, she gave me my confidence, think, realising that I actually could look after something. And yeah, and like you said, just having this wild bird in our house and being close to nature, it changed everything. It just brought a lot of happiness into our, into our lives. And to some degree, do you credit Penguin for driving you towards those three surfing championships? I <laughs> should, shouldn't I? <laughs> uh, I could do. Well, actually, when, I, when we had Penguin, I was actually kayaking. Um, so, yeah, I could credit her for the kayaking, but she wasn't around with the surfing. But the surfing was amazing because I've grown up surfing. So it was kind of like just that's the one thing that I really love to do. And understandably part of the healing process? Very much so. Just getting back out in nature and being back on the water. They were, they were my two favourite places. And the two places I missed the most was actually being on the water and then being in the bush. Because I used to mountain bike a lot. And, and I'd always grab my bike and go up to the national park near our house and ride through the bush and just sit on this rock and be surrounded. Well, there was no one there and just surrounded by the bush. They were my happy places and I really missed them. You decided to document your journey in a book, but what was the process of the intimacy of that then being translated into film? Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I mean, we had no intention of making a film. It just kind of happened organically, which was quite amazing. Um, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy watching, well, firstly watching Naomi Watts play me. Yeah. <laughs> and we were so lucky because she was so down to earth and so lovely, which 
yeah, I'm incredibly grateful for. I mean, I was so nervous meeting her. I'm like, man, meeting a movie star and I'm just me. But like, as soon as we met, I was just like, yeah, you are, you're seriously cool. What about the fact that they, they were in your house? Yeah, it was filming. bizarre. So they came in, they kicked us out. Yeah, and then they, they um, changed all the furniture and painted it. They wanted it to make it a bit moodier. Our house is actually all white normally, and they wanted it to make it a little bit darker and set the scene, I guess. <laughs> Have you left the paint colour? No. <laughs> no, we scored a new, a new um, coat of paint throughout our house, which was a bit of pretty cool. She wore your clothes, though, too, didn't she? Sort of. They went through my wardrobe, which was quite funny. And it's, yeah, I mean, man, I live in, like, jeans and board shorts and a T-shirt, so, and flannies. <laughs> I think Naomi kind of struggled with the flanny a bit. She's just like, ah, but, yeah, it's quite, it was quite funny. I love the creative process that you're part of. <laughs> you're here at Beef 2024. Many of the people listening to you are no stranger to adversity, especially life on the land. It can be tough. Yeah. What's your advice to them when it feels like they're facing unbeatable challenges? Well, my advice would well, what has helped me is just surround yourself with good people. Good people and you know they're always going to have your back and like just you'll have a good support team that get you through the worst, the hardest times. I mean, that's what's yeah, helped me get through the, the darkest moments for sure. That and actually finding a purpose. That changed everything for me. And I found my purpose when I got on the Australian team for the paracanoeing. And I was like, I had something to aim for, something, some, like I had a goal, and that, that was life-changing for me. You've spoken about mountain biking, surfing, canoeing, kayaking. What's next? Well, I'm actually off to Hawaii on Saturday for a competition, a surfing competition. So that is awesome. So there's, um, it's like they call it a tour. It's, a, it's obviously a para, para surfing competition. And, yeah, so the last, the last, the last, oh, my God, edit that one. The last one was in Byron Bay in March and then we go to Hawaii in, in, on the weekend and then Costa Rica and then California. Wow, all the yeah. best beaches. Yeah, kind of. Not so much California though. Can't say I'm a fan of California surf. It's, it's too big. It's kind of big and scary and cold. So yeah, give me Hawaii any day. It's warm, there's turtles, and it's really gorgeous. So, well, from Rockhampton to Hawaii, Sam Bloom, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. No, thanks for having me. It's been amazing. Beef is a key.